Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you some tricks on how to significantly speed up your workflow in Alert Time Lapse Pro. When processing multiple sequences with these tricks that you're learning today, you're going to be much faster in comparison to just editing one sequence after the other. For this example, I've put three sequences into one folder. Uh, let's pretend those are just new sequences that I've just recently shot. The first step would be to load one of those sequences. What will then happen is that Alert Time Lapse will initialize the sequence, extract the EXIF data and uh, extract the camera previews. This takes some time, so what you can do now is just use the parent folder here and right click on it and then batch initialization camera previews and this will now allow you to do the batch initialization for all of those three subfolders. Of course this will take some time as well but now in the meantime you can do other stuff and then come back when this is finished uh, and it will save you quite some time afterwards when dealing with the individual sequences. Please note that if you do this on the parent folder, you will initialize every single child folder. So please do this on parent folders that only have new child folders that you really would like to initialize. Otherwise you might lose your precious former edits. Okay, once the first sequence has been finished, it will turn white here. That means that the batch processing, which is indicated by red folder names, has just been finished on this sequence. So let's start with that one while the other will get initialized in background. After loading this sequence, you start with a regular workflow. Um, first, we are going to do the keyframes wizard. Decide how many keyframes to set. This is a nice Milky Way. I would just go for maybe five keyframes, then save the sequence. Now instead of bringing this one to Lightroom, I will just continue with the second one. Now for the second sequence, we do the keyframes wizard, but not go for so many keyframes. I'll just do this very quickly. Do my holy grail wizard, then save. Now we continue with the third sequence, keyframes wizard. This is just a static sequence, so two keyframes will do. There's no holy grail, save. Okay, the next step now is to bring one of those sequences to Lightroom. So I will just drag this one to Lightroom, drop it over the library, make sure that add is selected here and add it to the catalog. Now I'll get this sequence here. This is the sequence that I imported and I will just select to show my, me the parent folder and this is the Patagonia folder that I've just had where all, my, all of my three sequences are located. So now I will just click on synchronize folder here and this will import all of the images from the other two sequences as well. So at the end I would have all my three sequences here in Lightroom. So this is basically just a shortcut to not having to drag drop every one of those three sequences to Lightroom but just make sure that all of my images that I have in LR time lapse are in Lightroom as well. Now I can just select the parent folder here and I will get and once I set my filter to the keyframes I will have the keyframes of all of my sequences here. Okay, I will just do a quick editing. You already know how this works so I will just do this very roughly. Okay, let's continue with the second sequence. This one is a little bit more complicated, but I will do a very quick editing here. Okay. 
Okay, that was just a quick and dirty editing of all of those keyframes. Now I proceed to the last sequence. Once we're finished with all of those keyframes, I will select the whole bunch of keyframes of all three sequences and then hit Ctrl S or on Mac it's Command S uh, just to save the metadata. Now let's go back to LR Timelapse. We start with the first sequence and we can instantly hit on Auto Transition, then turn on the visual previews and proceed to the next sequence. This will ask you if you would like to finish the visual preview creation in background. And you could even add an automatic multipass deflicker here. This will not let you see in advance how much flicker you have. But of course you could wait a little bit until some of those previews are being generated and then judge if you really have lots of flicker or not. In this case it's not much flicker so I will just add the automatic multipass deflicker here and uh, this is going to show me the settings two passes should be enough. I will have a little bit higher smoothing setting because this is a very very smooth progression here and just click on OK. This would put my visual preview and deflicker generation in background and open the next image for me. Again I can click on auto transition instantly. You don't have to wait until those previews have been loaded. Once the transition is finished just click on visual previews. This will start developing the previews in a foreground process and uh, because the computer is already doing a lot of work in background here for my background task uh, this might be a little bit slower now, but nevertheless, once it started again, you can switch to the next sequence and again it will ask you if you would like to have those visual previews creation continued in background and again will say yes. In this case I'm not going to add the multipositive flicker, I will do it later for this sequence because I would like to have a look. Um, on how the visual previews for this sequence look like to be able to adjust the settings that I would like to use for the deflicker. Anyway, this will let me proceed to the next sequence and that one should be very easy and you can see it's taking a little bit of time now because the computer is doing some heavy work in background but I don't have to wait too long I can just continue doing my editing. Next step would again be auto transition and visual previews. And in order to have those visual previews created, you can either wait here until they are done or you could just proceed with the next sequence. In this case, because it's the last one that I would like to edit, I will just wait a moment. This loaded sequence has now finished the visual preview creation. You can see there is still some flicker going on here. I would set my reference area here to the sky and add my visual deflicker as usually. In this case I don't need a multipass, I just apply this deflicker. But usually for such a simple sequence you don't need a multipass deflicker and you don't need to wait for the previews to be generated. So in this case I will just abort the visual preview creation and mark this sequence as finished for me so that I know that I'm done with editing. Now I can just do something else and wait for alert time lapse to finish my background processes for the first and the second sequence. Now all of our batch processes are finished. Since we decided to leave this one here just with the previews but without any deflicker in order to be able to set the settings manually we still have one step to do. Otherwise we would already be finished in LR time lapse. I will set my reference area. Let's just apply it. I will smooth this curve a little bit and in this case I guess multipass deflicker of two passes will be necessary. I'm going to apply this and wait until it's finished.
One thing that you could do to speed up the second or third D flicker pass is just to make a selection while the flicker is happening. This will limit the D flickering to this selection. Make sure that you end the selection at some place where the pink curve is over the green curve in order to not get a jump there. Cool, we are finished and we have a quite smooth curve here now. The flicker in two passes worked out perfectly. Great. Now we are finished with all of our three sequences in Lightroom. I can mark those as finished and now I can just go back to Lightroom. Still we have the parent folder selected here and that's cool because now I go to full sequence co control A or command A on Mac and then metadata read metadata from files. And there's a nice shortcut here to speed this up. Just go on the filter speed up Lightroom and you will see that the images disappear and but the progress bar here will start to get much faster now because Lightroom is not going to create the previews anymore in meantime. Once Lightroom is finished you can set the filter to full sequence again. Don't bother to wait until those previews have been updated. Now there is one important thing. Please don't leave your selection here on the Patagonia folder. Instead select every single folder holding the control key um, because otherwise the exporter is not going to distinguish between those folders and make them as separate time lapses. That's an important thing to consider. Now you can go to export and you will see multiple sources appearing here. Choose your output path and click on export. This will now prepare the export and render one folder after the other in LR time lapse. This approach of doing individual workflow steps for multiple sequences in order to save the waiting time is very very efficient. I only showed you this with three sequences but normally when you come back from a shooting and you have 10 or 20 sequences you will really appreciate how much faster you will be with this approach with LR Timelapse Pro. There is another batch option that you might or might not know. When you go to File Render Video you know that you can select previously exported intermediary sequence here and just choose to render this afterwards with different settings. What you might not know is that you can set the settings in advance. For example, you choose to go ProRes in 4K UHD high quality. Now you go to choose and you might even select multiple folders to render with those settings. When you hit OK, it will just give you one last query, but if you click on yes, it will render all of those folders with the settings that you set. And the cool thing now in LR Timelapse 5 is that it will even use the settings for force output to 16 to 9, motion blur, sharpen that you set formally when rendering that individual sequence. That means that those post-processing options are very individual per sequence. So usually when you render a sequence the first time you will decide for example where to put this 16 to 9 crop. And a lot of times this will know this even when you do it in batch. There is one exception if you don't want this to happen. For example you know you have set all your sequences to export in 16 to 9 but you would like to have a batch export of all of those five sequences without forcing them to 16 to 9. You just remove this click and you check lock here. This will lock the setting that you did in the dialog now to all of the sequences that you are going to export, overriding the individual settings that you might have set before. In contrast, if you are not sure which settings you did for one individual a sequence you can just set the setting now here for example like this 
then click on set settings on default and this will normally close the dialog. So there is one cool option that you can just hold the control key and click on set settings as default and this will just save the settings but not close the dialog. So you might now use load the next one, decide where to set the, uh, the crop, decide whether to do motion blur or sharpen and then again hold control and set settings as default. Now proceed to the next one and so on. So that way you could just set your settings and the same goes for render video. If you click on render video here, you will put this into the render queue and you could hold control. The dialog will not close. You can just choose the next one and again render video with control. So that's another option if you would like to check the settings individually for each sequence and just put them all together into the render queue and then after that wait until all videos have been rendered. I hope that these tips will help you to get to a much faster workflow when dealing with multiple sequences and I guess if, once you got used to it you will really see that it saves a lot of time when processing multiple time lapses. I hope you enjoy Alert Time Lapse 5 Pro. If you have any questions please let me know in the forum. If you have some cool clips to share please use the showroom and check out my other tutorials as well. See you soon. Bye bye.